Tonight, we take pleasure in bringing you Suspense, a weekly anthology of notable melodramas from stage and screen, fiction and radio, presented each week to bring you to the edge of your chair, to keep you in Suspense. The state of South Carolina, a patchwork quilt of cultures diverse even by American standards. Already inhabited by 29 Native American tribes when the British arrived in the 17th century, it was claimed as a crown colony and hurriedly settled by whomever could be convinced to move there. As a result, it soon became home to a hodgepodge of English dissidents, French Huguenots, Spanish Jews, Scots, Irish, and to its shame, vast numbers of African slaves. Such a mixture was a potential powder keg from the start. And so, perhaps as a subconscious preventative measure, the unique regional custom known as Southern hospitality became ingrained in its natives to such a degree that they gained world renown as the very embodiment of genteel decorum. Whether heartfelt or an artifice, the importance of proper manners and the art of keeping up appearances was stressed from childhood in many homes. But appearances can so often be deceptive. Alan? I can't hear you. Alan. Alan! Yes, dear? Oh, admit it, Alan. We are lost. We are not lost, O oh light of my life. We are merely taking the scenic route so that we can best appreciate the rich cultural and historical heritage of the great American South. Why, look, isn't that Tara? Yes, yes, it is. I can see Rhett Butler and Scarlett O'Hara standing on the veranda, and they're waving to us. Oh, you're a regular laugh riot. That's why you married me. Is it? Huh. I seem to have forgotten what the reason was. Now, honey, don't be like that. How should I be, Alan? We're lost. I told you, Maxine, we're not lost. We're taking the scenic route. Yes, I know. Never you fear. We'll be back in civilization any minute now. You think so? Alan, we've been driving on dirt roads for over an hour now, and we've taken so many twists and turns that I doubt we could even find our way back to where we turned onto here in the first place. Oh, you and your shortcut. Maxine, we'll save at least 20 minutes if we go this way. So, are you doubting the awesome powers of the human compass? I think doubting would be an understatement. Oh, honey. Well, what do you think we should do? Push on or turn around and try to find our way back? Lady's choice. Well, given that this road has shrunken to little more than a goat path, our best bet is to try retracing our steps back to the main road. As the lady commands, so shall it be done. You're going to try to turn around here? Don't you want to wait till we find a, a wider spot? Not to worry. Good old Alan has everything under control. But there's barely enough room to even go forward. Have no fear. Alan Davis is here. Look out! We're stuck. Really? I had noticed. If I had a shovel... I could raise the level of the back tires enough to give us a little more traction, then we could... Do we have a shovel? No shovel here. Then it's a moot point. Next plan? Hey, it could be worse. Oh, really? How? Um, at least we're in here, nice and dry. Oh, I'm just glad you didn't say at least we're not being struck by lightning. <laughs> 
So what do we do now? Well, we can't very well walk for help. We haven't seen a house for miles. And the odds of another car happening across us are pretty slim. Well, what do you know? Ask and ye shall receive. Y'all stuck? Whatever that is, any idea like that. Why, yes, yes we are. We tried to turn around and got hung up in this ditch. Is there a filling station anywhere close? We might need a tow truck. <laughs> Nearest filling station's 20 miles yonder. Well, could you possibly help us? Maybe pull us out of here? We'd be glad to pay you. Not in this here storm, but I reckon I can put y'all up for the night. We can get your car in the morning. Alan, I, I don't know. What other choice do you Well, that sounds swell. Thank you. Come on over. Please forgive my manners. My name's Alan Davis. This is my wife, Maxine. <laughs> Vernon Brindamore. Y'all ain't from round here, are ya? No, we're on our honeymoon. Yes, Alan wanted to come visit the sunny south, and so here we are. <laughs> my wife, she's quite a card. So, where y'all folks staying? Oh, at the hotel over in Abbeville. Anyone know where y'all went? We don't even know where we went. Yes, well, um, we should um, check in with the hotel. C could we use your phone? <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank God no phone. Nearest one's like ten miles over yonder. That's all right. I'm sure everything will be just fine. <laughs> so, how much further do we have to go? I'm well, just passing the gate now. What did that say on the sign over the gate? The name of our plantation, De Vermis Manor. De Vermis Manor. What a curious name. Why are we going so fast? We're just about to the house. Why well, can't get y'all inside and comfortable right quick? We don't often get guests around here. Now hurry before y'all catch your death of cold. <laughs> This is uh, quite a home you have here, Mr. Brindamar. How long have you lived here? Make yourselves to home in the parlor. I'll fetch my kinfolk. <laughs> They'll be right pleased to see visitors. Oh, Alan, this place gives me the willies. What, this place? No. Yes, this place, Mr. Weisenheimer. Like, like that music they're playing. There's something almost unearthly about it. What music? I don't hear any music. And the feeling of unwholesome decay all around. Ugh. This old place? Oh, I think it's a charming little fixer-upper. Maybe the Brindamars will be willing to sell. Think of all the kids we could raise in a place this big. Let's ask when they come back. Will you be serious for once? Alan, this house would require all sorts of work just to qualify as condemned. The wood's rotten, the windows are boarded up. And the roof leaks, apparently. Constructed by the same folks who did the top of our car, no doubt. Did you see the grounds? It looks like a bombing range, all cratered and holes everywhere. Perhaps the Brindamars are simply avid golfers whose aspirations outstrip their abilities. Oh, Alan Davis, when we get out of this place... Don't you mean if, darling? Please permit me to introduce myself. I'm Jedediah Brindamore. Welcome to Divermus Manorum. I'm Alan Davis, and this is my wife, Maxine. Hello. A pleasure, madam. Truly a pleasure. This is my sister, Celia. Welcome to our home, Mr. and Mrs. Davis. 
We seldom have visitors these days. Vernon, you already met. And this is my nephew, Roderick. Howdy. Vernon tells us that y'all have a mite bit of trouble with your car. Yes, well, we got lost and got stuck when we tried to turn around. Yeah, <laughs> I reckon you ain't the first to get in a fix like that on these roads. In a storm like this, it gets like to quicksand out there. And for a stranger to these here parts, it could end up being fatal. Jedediah, don't you be getting our guests all fussed. Now don't you fret none. Come tomorrow, Roderick and Vernon will fit your car right out of that ditch. And then we can be on our way. Never you fear. By this time tomorrow, y'all will be long gone. I was asking Vernon about this place. It's an amazing home, absolutely enormous. How long have you lived here? The Vermis Manorum has belonged to our family since back before South Carolina declared independence from the British. Used to be one of the biggest and most prosperous plantations in all the South, with nine to four hundred workers back before the war for Southern independence. But times have changed. The war for Southern independence? The Civil War? Perhaps you've heard of it? Oh, oh. Say, Mr. Brendamore, you don't have any, you know, hard feelings about that sad period in American history, do you? <laughs> no. Can't see why there's reason to hold a grudge against folks who weren't involved know-how. Still... So, do you still farm here on the plantation? Oh, bit. Crops still grow up just fine. But with all the workers gone, tain't much the four of us can do. And anyways, we don't venture outside much. Leastwise, not during the day. Fine soil for crops, though. Mighty fine soil. Really? Why is that? The worms. We got us special worms. They, uh... What's the word, Aunt Celia? Aerate, Roderick. The word is aerate. Aerate. The rainworms aerate the soil by tunneling round. So's it gets plumb full of oxygen. Makes everything grow up powerful big. Including the gophers around here, I guess. Gophers? <laughs> Tank got no gophers around here. Um, my wife noticed a lot of holes in the yard when we came in. So I just assumed you had some trouble with gophers. Them holes weren't me by no Gophers? Go. Yeah, gophers. We, we get them big around here. <laughs> big as bears! <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Davis, you must be hungry. Why don't I fix you some supper? Oh, please don't go to any trouble unless you're planning to cook for yourselves as well. Oh, we won't be eating again till after you've gone. But it's no trouble at all. Well, that would be wonderful. Uh, can I help you? Oh, that's all right, dear. But if you've got your mind set on having a little girl talk, I'd be obliged. Land sakes, I can't even remember the last time we had any other women folk round here. Well, there was that young gal from Virginia a few months back. Come along, Mrs. Davis. Something's going on here, Alan, and I'm going to find out what. It's very kind of uh, you and your family to help us out. Oh, think nothing of it, Mrs. Davis. We Brindamores are renowned for our hospitality. And we do so love to have visitors. <laughs> Being so far from the nearest town, I, I wouldn't imagine you, you get many guests. <laughs> oh, you'd be surprised. 
You're not the first travelers to miss that turn off Highway 20. As I recall, there used to be a sign there. Hmm. Something must have happened to it. Um, well, how often do lost travelers turn up at your door? Oh, just often enough. Just often enough for what? So what brings you all to Abbeville County? We're on our honeymoon. Well, isn't that nice? Y yes, it's, it's lovely. Uh, uh, Roderick um, mentioned a woman who was here a few months ago. It's a shame that the weather's so all fired miserable. What, with you on your honeymoon and all? Yes, it's unfortunate. Um, now, about what Roderick said. Oh, best pay no mind to Roderick. The boy's as strong as an ox, but a little dim. So, y y you're saying that there wasn't a woman here? I reckon y'all don't have no kinfolk around here, do you? No, we're, we're from New York. And no one knows where you are. S so about that woman who was here? Oh, I'll become clear soon enough, Mrs. Davis. Alan, I don't feel well. Uh, Mr. Brendamore, could we please be shown to our room? Don't you want to have some supper first, honey? No. I would like to go upstairs. Now. Of course. Roderick, please take our guests upstairs. And take care they don't get lost. Right, Jedediah. Follow me. Please excuse us. Maxine, what's gotten into you? Not now, Alan. But... Not now. If and you need anything, just holler. I'll be close to hand. All night long. Okay, what gives? We need to get out of here. Now! Are you off your rocker? Our car's still stuck. We don't know where we are, and it's raining harder than ever. I don't care, Alan. All I know is that if we don't get out of here, we're going to die. Now I know you're off your rocker. Just what do you think is going to happen? Oh, come on, Alan. Don't tell me that you're not getting a bad feeling about the Brendamores. Okay. I will grant that they are a little rustic, but they seem like decent enough folks. What makes you think that they aren't what they seem? I was a little suspicious after we first met them, but after that talk I had with Celia, I think they might be murderers. Based on what? Based on a lot of little things, like how they cut Roderick off when he started to talk about visitors who've been here in the past, and, and the way that maniac Vernon couldn't wait to get us inside the house, and, and how they don't eat till late at night, nor hardly go out in the daylight, and those mystery holes all over the grounds, and that Celia Allen, she was toying with me. The look in her eyes. I think she's the craziest one of the bunch. I don't know. Okay, okay, then try this on for size. Do you know what the name De Vermis Minorum means? It's Latin for House of Worms. What? That's right. House of Worms. Worms, a symbol of death. Honey, th this all seems hard to believe. Alan, look, I don't know if they're murderers or vampires or who knows what else. All I know is that it, I, I have to get out of this house. I'd rather take my chances in the storm than spend another minute here. Are you going to come with me or not? All right. All right, let's go.
Isako's clear. Well, it seems to be. Let's go. They's trying to escape! They's trying to escape! Get him! Run for it! Thank God it's not locked! They don't seem to be following us. Keep running anyway, and watch out for those holes! Stop! Alan, stop! Do you hear that? A and feel that? Like something coming from beneath us. Oh my god! Look! Snakes! Giant snakes squirming all around us! But those aren't snakes! No! Oh my god! They're worms! Worms the size of a man! So this is why it's called Divermus Minorum! Come on! We have to get away! Maxine, come on! They're everywhere! They're everywhere! Oh my god! No! 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 It's over then. Seems almost a shame. The Davises were nice folks. Yep, but worms gotta be fed. That there's the deal our kin made nigh under three hundred years ago. And even though the fields are all laying fallow, we still gotta hold up our part of the bargain till the end of our days. I reckon I understand that, Jedediah. But what I don't understand is why we go through all this play acting every time we gotta feed the worms. Why do we go to all the trouble to scare folks into running away? when all we gotta do is throw them outside and let the worms get them. Because, my dear boy, they's our guests. And it just wouldn't be polite to cast our guests out into the night now, would it? Should they choose to leave of their own accord, well, that's their business, but we must never throw them out. After all, we Brindamores have a proud family name to uphold. Now who's hungry? Supper's just about ready. So ends De Vermis Minorum by John C. Alzadek and Dana Perry Hayes. Tonight's story of Suspense. Suspense is produced by Blue Hours Productions and recorded at Melrose Music in Hollywood, California. Tonight's radio drama was written especially for Suspense by John C. Alzadek and Dana Perry Hayes. Elizabeth Grayson was Maxine Davis. John Laver was Alan Davis. Damon Crawl was Jedediah Brindamore. Dana Perry Hayes was Celia Brindamore. Sean Hackman was Vernon Brindamore. And Steve Moulton was Roderick Brindamore. I'm Damon Crawl. Next week at this time, tune in again for another study in... Suspense. <laughs>